Good morning. Today is the 11th day of March in this 2021st year of our Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today's theme is uh, regret. And uh, it's something that maybe we have when we would have done things a different way, when options that uh, were not taken prove out to be better than what we chose to do. Uh, but there was one who optioned for something that was very different than the other 12 at Calvary, and that was Judas. The regrets that he must have, we will never know. But uh, we'll listen to a part of his story today. Uh, the psalm I read today is a psalm that speaks of, of regrets, and uh, it's the sixth psalm. Lord, do not rebuke me in your anger. Do not punish me in your wrath. Have pity on me, Lord, for I am weak. Heal me, Lord, for my bones are racked. My spirit shakes with terror. How long, O oh Lord, how long? Turn, O oh Lord, and deliver me. Save me <clears throat> for your mercy's sake. For in death no one remembers you. And who will give you thanks in the grave? I grow weary because of my groaning. Every night I drench my bed and, and flood my couch with tears. My eyes are wasted with grief and worn away because of all my enemies. Depart from me, all evildoers, for the Lord has heard the, so the sound of my weeping. The Lord has heard my supplication. The Lord accepts my prayer. All my enemies shall be confounded and quake with fear, and they shall turn back and suddenly be put to shame. The Hill of Regret While <clears throat> Jesus was climbing the hill of Calvary, Judas was climbing another hill, the hill of regret. He walked it alone. Its trail was rock-strewn with shame and hurt. Its landscape was, a bear, was as barren as his soul. Thorns of remorse tore at his ankles and calves. The lips that had kissed a king were cracked with grief and on his shoulders he bore a burden that bowed his back, bowed his back, his own failure. Why Judas betrayed his master is really not important. Whether motivated by anger or greed, the end result was the same, regret. A few years ago I visited the Supreme Court. As I sat in the visitor's chambers, I observed the splendor of the scene. The Chief Justice was flanked by his colleagues, Robed in honor, they were the apex of justice. They represented the efforts of countless minds through thousands of decades. Here was man's best effort to deal with his own failures. How pointless it would be, I thought to myself, if I approached the bench and requested forgiveness for my mistakes. Forgiveness for talking back to my fifth grade teacher. Forgiveness for being disloyal to my friends. Forgiveness for pledging I won't on Sunday and saying I will on Monday. Forgiveness for the countless hours I have spent wandering in society's gutters. It would be pointless because the judge could do nothing. Maybe a few days in jail to appease my guilt, but forgiveness? It wasn't his to give. Maybe that's why so many of us spend so many hours on the hill of regret. We haven't found a way to forgive ourselves. So up the hill we trudge, weary, wounded, hearts wrestling with unresolved mistakes, sighs of anxiety, tears of frustration, words of rational, rationalization, moans of doubt. For some, the pain is on the surface. For others, the hurt is submerged, buried in a rarely touched substrata of bad memories. Parents, lovers, professionals, some trying to forget, others trying to remember, all trying to cope. We walk silently in single file with leg irons of guilt. Paul was the man who posed the question that is on 
all of our lips. Who will rescue me from this body of death? As the trails end, there are two trees. One is weathered and leafless. It is dead, but still sturdy. Its bark is gone, leaving smooth wood bleached white by the years. Twigs and buds no longer sprout. Only bare branches fork from the trunk. On the strongest of these branches is tied a hangman's noose. It was here that Judas dealt with his failure. If only Judas had looked at the adjacent tree. It is also dead. Its wood is also smooth. But there is no noose tied to its crossbeam. No more death on this tree. Once was enough. One death for all. Those of us who have also betrayed Jesus know better than to be too hard on Judas for choosing the tree he did. To think that Jesus would really unburden our shoulders and unshackle our legs after all we've done to him is not easy to believe. In fact, it takes just as much faith to believe that Jesus can look past my betrayals as it does to believe that he rose from the dead. Both are just miraculous. What a pair, these two trees. Only a few feet from the tree of despair stands the tree of hope. Life is paradoxically close to death. Goodness within arm's reach of darkness. A hangman's noose and a life preserver swinging in the same shadow. But here they stand. One can't help but be a bit stunned by the inconceivability of it all. Why does Jesus stand on life's most barren hill and await me with outstretched, nail-pierced hands? A crazy holy grace, it has been called. A type of grace that doesn't hold up to logic. But then I guess grace doesn't have to be logical. If it did, it wouldn't be grace. Regrets. He spoke well of what they are, and probably each of us have those things that we would have chosen to do differently if we had that ability to reverse the time, change the spin of the earth, to return to a point where things were different and the choice was to be made. But to live with regrets is not to live. Regrets are burdens that weigh us down from making perhaps better choices. Or maybe they inform us to be a better person when we have suffered them. Regrets are those things that we carry. We carry and we place upon that cross. The cross that Christ bore, the sins, the regrets, the disappointments of humanity. And he gives us that do-over that next opportunity to make things different, to choose a better route. So we live in the shadow of a cross that is called grace and mercy, a cross that illumines the sky with the possibilities of what can be the reality of hopes that are forever. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. O oh, good and gracious God, for the gift of your cross that stands before us in all circumstances of life, we give you thanks. We thank you that you understand our failings and our falls, and that you are willing and able to pick us up and set us straight upon the pathway once again. We come in to you this day and each day, in all sincerity, those things that we would have done differently, those choices that perhaps were not as you would have us to choose. And we lay them upon your cross 
And we ask that you would give us that hope and that future and that new possibility of a new day that comes through your forgiveness. Help us to be repentant souls, those who are willing to see our errors and change our ways. We thank you for giving us that opportunity to do so. Bless us, O oh Lord, throughout this day. Help us to turn to your word as a guide post along the pathway of life, that it will show us a good way in which we should travel and live this life you have blessed us with. Care for those that, O oh Lord, need your presence and help and your strength and encouragement. For those that suffer from depression, from those that have a sense of hopelessness in their life, for those that would consider the alternatives of leaving this world, those who would take their own life, give them pause to reflect better upon those things and the opportunities that you would afford them. Embrace those that seek your help for shelter, for food, for sustenance, for love, for healing especially those that we commend to you in our prayers this morning. For into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you, to be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If you can't tell by the shirt I'm wearing what team I'm kind of excited about, it's the Virginia Cavaliers. They have their first game in the quarterfinals of the ACC Men's Basketball Tournament. Um, I'll be cheering them on at noontime. There'll be lots of other great games today. It's one of the more exciting basketball uh, tournaments that there is. Enjoy your day, and uh, may God's blessings travel with you. Today we have beautiful blue skies, uh, sunny weather outside, uh, temperatures that will be rather nice, I, I suspect. Uh, God be with you, and God's peace and presence look over. Amen.